Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Freifunk. Um, I'm a little tall. Um, so <laughs> you can connect to our network right now. It's available here. So if you want to check it out, uh, you will get a German IP and you get like really weird ads on YouTube. If you're kind of into that, feel free. Um, so Freifunk is uh, the community network that I was working on before I moved to Canada. I'm still working on, uh, on it today. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about what we do. And it's kind of interesting because uh, a lot of the stuff that I just heard um, kind of resonates with what we do as well. Um, but uh, We've been doing this for very, very long, more than 15 years, and uh, we have a lot of learnings that I think you know uh, some people can appreciate here. So the vision of Freifunk really is um, distributing free networks to democratize the communication inf infrastructure and promoting social structures locally. So what that means is Freifunk is not a project. It's not like one network that you can connect to and everybody is on the same Freifunk network. It's really a local initiative and it's a movement. So what that means it's a network of more than 48,000 nodes, and there's actually 200 nodes that we uh, don't see here on that list because I just uh, recognized that our network fell off of the monitoring somehow. So a lot of the networks don't have even monitoring for their, their nodes, so we wouldn't be able to see them on this map. The basic principle of Freifung is Pico Peering, the Pico Peering Agreement. Um, eggs, ready? Uh, <laughs> So the Pico Peering Agreement is really easily summed up in three uh, bullet points. Free transit, which means that you allow network to, uh, like data to pass through your network unaltered. You don't censor it. You don't do anything with that data. You don't implement QoS. You don't implement uh, pages that you have to click on I agree to get on the network. Uh, the second one is open communication. And what that means is you make yourself, if you set up a Freifunk node, you make yourself available to communication uh, through email, preferably, is what this agreement actually says, to make sure that other people can connect to your network. So it is about peering, which means you need to connect to other people. Uh, and if something's wrong with your node, you better be available to you know, talk about it and uh, reestablish that connection. And then there's no warranty. There's no SLAs. We don't ag agree on any avail availabilities for the network at all. So it's just something that is experimental, that might work, might not work. Um, and then for the history, Freifunk.net was registered in 2003. We ha even have like, you can trace stuff back to 2001 when you know, the first Wi-Fi access points came out and um, people were hacking them, putting other software on them. It really took off in, in 2012, 2013. I actually joined my, or created my local Freifunk group in uh, 2013. And the peak of activity was uh, in 2015, 2016, about the time uh, the Syrian refugee crisis pretty much hit Germany pretty hard um, and we went out on the streets into the refugee camps, set up Wi-Fi networks for the refugees, uh, and that sparked interest of a lot more people, and that's really when we went from 10,000 nodes to more than 30,000 nodes at that time. Um, Freifunk has a very distinct political influence in Germany uh, these days. Um, so Germany had a very crazy law uh, about liability called Störerhaftung, uh, which is all about, uh, hey, if somebody does something through your internet connection and your IP address is on that packet that is like infringing on copyright, you're liable for that. You're going to pay the copyright holder for whatever you did. So uh, there was an industry that got created around that in Germany where lawyer, lawyers started like pushing out automated uh, cease and desist letters with like a nice bill attached to them. So here, pay $5,000. Don't ever download anything from the internet again. If you do, it's 200,000 uh, euros, sorry. <laughs> and uh, people didn't like that. So it basically, basically was a very oppressive way of saying, do not share your internet connection. That's what people did. Uh, even in cafes where they had Wi-Fi, they wouldn't give you the, wi the Wi-Fi password because you could download stuff. So uh, we used a little loophole to get around that. And here's the thing, especially from a regulatory perspective, you don't get to decide whether you're an ISP or not. The regulator will do it for you. Um, so we actually used that loophole because ISPs in Germany obviously were exempt from that rule, right? You don't go to an ISP and say, hey, give us like 5 million euros because people are downloading torrents to your network, right? So what we did was like, okay, we're an ISP now. Uh, and then German data privacy laws is like the next part is, um, okay, you can only store data about your connections and your customers if you need them for billing. Oh, our network is free. Oh, we can't store any data about our users because we're not billing, right? So um, we didn't know who our users are. And that means um, there's no data available for us to give to anybody 
who wants to you know, follow up with anybody that downloaded something, or even um, uh, in, in criminal cases, it's, it's kind of harder for us to comply with, uh, with law enforcement. Um, it's, it's notable to say that the Störerhaftung is a civil liability law. It's not a criminal liability law. People didn't go to jail for things they didn't do. That's like illegal in a democracy, technically. And um, this is kind of a thing. In 2017, they actually threw out that law. It's, uh, it's gone. And a lot of that can be attributed to the work of Freifunk, the Pirate Party, and other um, influencers in that, in that area. Uh, access and comments, um, internet as a right to people, internet as a basic service that is provided to people that are on social services are things that uh, Freifunker uh, care about. And uh, community network as a charitable cause is something that's going on right now. We actually have a law in writing that says Freifunk is a charitable cause. It even says Freifunk on it. Um, but due to uh, you know, elections going on, it never really got passed. So we're really trying to get that passed because um, internet clubs in Germany are specifically not charitable because you know they provide a service that an um, a ISP could provide to you. So they were like, yeah, no, that's like a commercial activity, so it's not uh, uh, charitable. But uh, Freifung has a lot of other ideals. So we try to reduce the digital divide, which means we bring networks to you, we, we help you to build those networks, um, building alternative forms of communication, not only using the internet, but also connecting to people locally over a mesh network um, uh, sending traffic just locally and creating and sharing knowledge about networks. So here's my controversial slide. I hope people from Germany are watching because I posted this uh, on the German Freifunk Forum. This is my very subjective view on how the um, uh, vision of Freifunk aligns with the mainstream um, implementation of Freifunk these days. So right now, Freifunk is kind of like, it should be an experimental mesh where people like connect to, use new technologies to connect to each other. Right now, we're kind of more of a service provider. So people are like, hey, if you have like a, um, a coffee shop and you want free Wi-Fi, just set up one of our routers and uh, you know, you're not gonna be liable for it. And then it's like, hey, I, this other company charges me 50 euros a month. Like, I'm just gonna use the Freifunk uh, thing. So are we a, net, a community network or a nerd playground? We're kind of more in a nerd playground right now because a lot of, stuff is happening in the background to keep the networks up. It's not as decentralized as we, as we want. Mesh local services, something I talked about, do you connect to people locally, uh, share data locally, or does it traverse the internet? We're kind of more of an internet access provider at this point. We give people free Wi-Fi that they can use to access the internet, which, is, which doesn't really align with the vision of Freifunk because um, Freifunk would much rather have internet as a service in their mesh equally with all the other services that are provided in the mesh. Decentralization, centralization. Freifunk would like to be completely decentralized. Uh, right now, we have a lot of local VPN servers and uh, uh, a centralized DV VPN servers where we exit traffic, uh, traffic into the internet. And the last bit is like the most important one, the most uh, uh, salient point I want to stress here. Is it empowerment or is it self-exploitation? We see a small group of people working tirelessly to keep the networks up that pe other people now start to depend on, and those people have lives that change as well. So that's kind of an issue right there that you need to think about. Are you exploiting yourself for the greater good of other people that not necessarily value the work that you do? So that's one of the issues that I've found with Freifunk recently. Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're at time-ish, but I will allow the quickest question if someone has a burning one. Okay, I see one here. And could um, the next speaker come up to prep in the interim? You, you mentioned uh, mesh local services as opposed to like the internet as one of the features that you could offer in your network. So uh, can you give us like one or two of your favorite mesh local services that you could advertise to say, come join us in Freifunk? That is the great question. We've been looking for that service for very long, but technically, if you have the internet, you don't necessarily need a mesh local service. But for me, it's about resilience. So resilience is a, is a service where you can have very important information, local information available on the mesh network, and something like a DAT would be a, a thing where you can like decentralize, have decentralized a share of data that is required, for example, in an emergency situation. Great, let's thanks Felix again.